said, I think that's what makes it uh, interesting and challenging to sit out here and kind of contemplate and decide exactly where you're going to lay your priorities. With all that being said, still an excellent division, uh, very tickled with the quality. Let's uh, give these young exhibitors a big round of applause. I'll go show you the two that I like the best. Third and final call, class 41 Shorthorns. Third and final call, class 41 Shorthorns. Your class 34 results of your Shorthorn show in first place. Entry number 355 with a weight of 1355. Go to Berg's Miley Myrtle Bow, exhibited by Kaylin Berg of Osage, Iowa. In second place, entry number 360 with a weight of 1302. Goes to CF Mona Lisa 2101. Owned by Miller Smith of Pendleton, Indiana. In third place, entry number 353 with a weight of 1365. CCR Pinky the Rue 2508. Exhibited by Cannon Clear of Madisonville, Texas. In fourth place, entry number 359. Respite Farm Incorporated. In fifth place, entry number 354. Alyssa Miller. Sixth place, entry number 356. Morgan Brooks. And in seventh place, entry number 356. 57, Colby, 6. At this time here at the 2023 North American International Livestock Exposition, during the 55th National Charlotte Show, we'd like to recognize our international guests. This recognition is hosted by the American International Charlotte Association, the Kentucky Department of Agriculture, and it is in, in conjunction with the United States Livestock Genetic Export. From Canada, we'd like to introduce Helgi and Canet by Craig Scott. From Australia, Colin Rex. From Mexico, Arnolfo Montemayor and Marcos Gonzalez, and from South Africa, Freddie Wasserfall. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together as we recognize these individuals here at the 55th National Charlet Show. I always kid about uh, when you sort these first divisions and whether it be in a heifer show or a bull show that uh, it's kind of like sorting fifth grade boys. You're going to have all sorts of, of shapes and sizes. And then when, when you throw in the, here in the, in the U.S. the diversity that we have of feedstuffs and how these cattle have been managed, um, I'm not so naive to know that some of these cattle maybe saw a little bit of silage as they were on the side of cows and, and wintered up. and. Um, you know, and some of us maybe came from some drought areas further south. So I take that into consideration as I think about cattle and, and what we see in this first division condition-wise, and a lot of that plays into my thought process. But with that said, as you analyze the cattle, the young lady's heifer calf, she's plenty big for a May baby, but she's a good May baby. And you look at her in terms of 
extension, you look at her in terms of just structure um, from a stoutness and power standpoint, those are to her advantage. Um, she, there's times where she wants to get a little piecey and rounder in her shoulder, but I think sometimes that's some of what I see is as she's fighting the halter, she relaxes just a little bit. Uh, I think she's going to assemble and hold those pieces and parts together quite well. The next female, you know, she she looks to be out here uh, that she's maybe a smaller frame female, but I think as you ask yourself, she's plenty big enough, and that's important to me that we recognize that. Um, from a balance standpoint, from a freshness standpoint, there's some things that she, she excels the lineup out here, and you really like that female in terms of strength at top. You like that female in terms of how she holds her top, both when she stopped and on the go. You study your lines. You study your depth or heel on that female. Um, there's lots of positives there. She does have some roundness and some boldness to her shoulder, but I think that happens when nature makes one really big-ended. Sure, we want to tidy her up in her face, but I think once they get the abscess taken care of, um, she's a little bit prettier face there. The next female, she's the one I called a ground sow earlier, round and robust and extra bold in her rib shape, but she's also the most mature about her head, neck, and in her brisket. Um, you can see the most condition on that female, but I love the power in terms of just mass and rib and bone and foot about that female. She's probably the shallower heeled of those two females right there in the middle, but again, you have to appreciate the mass and bulk to that one. Young man's female is the outlier in terms of type. Um, she's the greenest one out here, and you appreciate that. Really sharp frontage in terms of levelness of hip. She has a neat design there. She's just a hair rigid when you watch her out of her hawk. As she gets out and goes, she doesn't have the same flex uh, from the top of her hoof and, and her pastern as we see in the two right in front of her. But she's plenty soft and sound enough. It's just a descriptive point. So I think there's some options. There's some decisions to be made. I'll go out and show you the two that I appreciate the most. Results of Class 1C of your Charlay show in first place, entry number 22, Elman Miss Maryland 318L. Exhibited by McKenna Hoppe of Fremont, Michigan. In second place, entry number 17 with a weight of 733 pounds, SCC Aurora 151L. Exhibited by Samsung Cattle Company of Cloverdale, Indiana. Third place, entry number 18 with a weight of 759, DLB Lexi 872H. Owned by Kara Brooks of Brush Creek, Tennessee. In fourth place, entry number 19, Aubrey Nice. Your class 1D results in first place, entry number 37 with a weight of 938 pounds. Lee JFR Coco's copy, exhibited by Kix W. Lee of Gillum, Arkansas. In second place, entry number 24 with a weight of 809 TCCS Dolly 523, exhibited by TC Cattle Services of Ramsey, Illinois. In third place, entry number 30 with a weight of 785 RF Miss Duchess 3113, exhibited by Sage M. Revels of Webster, Florida. In fourth place, entry number 26, Sarah Barron. Fifth place, entry number 29, Anderson Showstock. First call, Class 8 Charlays. First call, Class 8 Charlays. Your 55th National Spring Heifer Calf Champion goes to entry number 16, Boy HL Lila 344L, exhibited by Sydney Allard of Sydney, Nebraska. Your reserve champion goes to entry number 22, L Man Miss Maryland 318L, exhibited by McKenna R. Hoppe of Fremont, Michigan.
get over here in this particular class, and I'll be honest with you, uh, the young ladies, female, came walking in the gate, took about three steps, and I said, hello, beautiful. Uh, awesome in terms of how elegant she is up front, so bold and massive. I challenge you, if you're in the stands and you want to see one that is wide constructed, dense and just absolutely massive come down and get on top of this one you know critics are gonna say does she meet her stride a hundred percent no we could tweak her ever so slightly but in my opinion that is one unique bovine to have that round of a body shape that much muscle and still tie it together with that kind of a look the young ladies female here in two is one that is very long, very elegant. She's one that I love in terms of her top line. You study that one, how her shoulder and her fore rib and how everything stays together there on the go. Very ideal in that situation. For me, that one needs to be laid back in her knee. And then as we compare to the female that, that goes before, she just gets overwhelmed in terms of body and mass. The young man's female here in three, I love her at the ground. Awesome in terms of her feet and legs. Study that one going, and she can just straight up just get out and motor. I love that about her. For me, at this stage in the game with this much condition, I question, you know, is there enough body? Is there enough doability? But definitely one that I think brings a lot of good to the table. Of that top four, buddy, when we pulled them to lead, your calf is the one that was the tightest in his spine and the most uh, just restricted on the go. Now on the stand, I love her in terms of when you can get her pulled together really long and level out of her hip, really good in terms of her body cavity, maybe just needs to be tweaked ever so slightly in terms of her structure. The roan heifer that comes next, presented awesome. The young lady does a great job. For me, everything's just tilted forward. You study her shoulder angle, it's too far forward there in terms of her body cavity, and then her fore spine wants to kind of come up and throw her out of balance. And then the young lady's female, already starting to come with some udder, still very nice and fresh up front. Just one that we gotta just change in terms of her rear end build. That one's just gotta get out and go better for me to move her any higher. trio of February heifer calves and I'll talk it all day long just quality and completeness and the young ladies female is the one that comes to the top for me she's the squarest at the ground she's the squarest as she travels she's also really fresh and attractive and bold bodied so I think she wins the class hands down heifer calf that comes next for February heifer calf weighing 1025 is pushing the limits for me in terms of size and scale and maturity from the side you think she's excellent in terms of soundness you get right behind her and you see that she wants to really rotate those hocks in and narrow just for she's not as wide down low as she is up high but she's big bodied she's soft you appreciate all those things about her young ladies female that comes next you appreciate the soundness of that female out of her front end really long reaching bold structured kind of a female we'd like to tidy her up through her neck over the top and underneath her neck make her a bit more attractive First call, class 42, Shorthorn. First call, class 42, Shorthorn.
your intermediate champion shorthorn female goes to entry number 337. Little Cedar Creek Marvelous Marchie 2220, exhibited by Tegan Ritchie of Beaverton, Michigan. Your reserve champion goes to entry number 347, CF Mona Lisa 2112, exhibited by Michaela Ung of Alden, New York. Your class 37 results in first place, entry number 374 with a weight of 1595, then SS Revival 703, exhibited by Bristol Bates of Chandlersville, Ohio. In second place, entry number 369, SN Chase and Dreams 229, exhibited by McKinley Evans of Lorenzo, Te Texas. In third place, entry number 370, Lane Patrick McCall. Fourth place, entry number 368, Mark Inskeep. In fifth place, entry number 375, Rebecca Hunt. In sixth place, entry number 373, Fiddling Jones. Get, get over here on the shorehorn side of things in this class of big breads come in and you know this initial trio of them I think is extremely interesting uh, that this duo of them I thought was the most genuine in terms of their shape in terms of their spread and still staying uh, fairly fresh about their condition the young man's female is the one of this initial pair that I'm the most comfortable with in terms of how everything uh, fits together from a her shoulder back, awesome in terms of her hip and leg, very, very good in terms of her body cavity. Her issue arises up front for me. I'd like to redesign her about her shoulder and her knee and just see that set back there on her framework, but that's one that definitely from her shoulder back brings a lot of quality. The young lady's female honestly fits the exact same mold as that one. Maybe to me as I step in behind the cattle, there's not quite as much cow there as what the young man's was for me personally. And then as we step off the side of her, maybe even one that's got a little chest would like to just clean her up there. But that's still an extremely good looking one that's very nice from behind. The calf in three is one that we love from the profile. This view of her right here is very intriguing and very nice. My question is, is with her carrying that much condition down through her udder, and then with her being the flatter one of the initial trio, I ask myself how much real cow is there. I, I got to have more, more punch, more muscle for me personally. The young lady's calf here, extremely good there in terms of her muscle and her bone. Just one we got to ask to just get out and go better. And then the young lady's calf that rounds us out, moderate and big bodied, a little forward in her shoulder, ties a little low there out, out the front side of it. One that I just like to kind of tweak around to allow her to proportion better from the side. Very nice class of them. Second call, class eight Charlays. Second call, class eight Charlays. This is a really, really good pair of females out here in, in the top end. As you study them, and, and you just have to take a little bit of time because th this first female, is she's not the fat one. She's not the softest one, and she doesn't just hit you right away. But when you recognize that she's extra long spine, she's really level hip. she's just as big-footed and big-structured as the one that stands in second. She's actually nicer from the top of her neck to the base of her neck in terms of just that design to her front. You couple that with how square she is at the ground and her front feet how just the, the extra length that she has, the freshness that you see. Uh, I think all those things add up to where I can check more boxes with that female. Now this one in second, I mean, she's so highly presented and so soft-haired, you want to gravitate to her um, because she is cool presented and she is the cool looking one. And, and But you can sure find some things as you analyze that female. She's not as long spine. She's deeper from the top of her neck to the base of her neck. She's flat necked. She's just deeper necked. I love the softness and the rib shape that she has. You can square her up 
just a little down low, but there's lots of quality in those two females. I used a longer sided one that I think is a little higher at her pin set, just some small details there. That's an excellent, excellent pair of females. Young man that stands third has one that's just ultra cool looking, really fresh fronted, very, very attractive. The thing that gets her in trouble is when you read her from the center part of her rib relative to the other two females in front of her, not as much mass and rib shape to that female. So you could body her down just a little bit, but that one come about junior nationals time next summer is gonna be a really, really neat female. One that you say is a big bread, she's gonna be pretty cool. She's sound, she's fresh, she's attractive, just not as much midsection today is the two in front of her. Then we get into one that's a bit coarser over the top of her neck. She's sound enough but in kind of a practical made female. Just quite a bit plainer there through her front end. Next female that comes around probably has as much length as you want to see in this pair um, but want to re realign that female in terms of her hip design, how she handles her hind leg, this lower pinned and not as comfortable in terms of how she sets her pastern at the ground. We get, we get out here in this particular division, and uh, my wife will be the first to tell you, uh, I'm not very good at hiding my feelings, not hiding my emotions. I kind of wear them on my sleeve. I maybe let the cat out of the bag, but I guess there's one out here that hit me really, really hard. The reserves are, you know, for reserve, it's, it's quite a bit tighter, but we're going to go ahead and keep these two class winners together. The young lady will have our champion. Congratulations. Third and final call, Class 8, Charlays. Third and final call, Class 8, Charlays. This is your first call, Class 11, Charlays. First call, Class 11. Second call, Class 42, Shorthorns. Second call, Class 42, Shorthorns. Results of Class 38 of your Shorthorn show in first place, entry number 379 with a weight of 1463. Don Ruby, 326, exhibited by Colton Greenhorn of Bellbrook, Ohio. In second place, entry number 390 with a weight of 1428. DFM Lucky Charm, 205, exhibited by Annabelle Campbell of Liberty, Indiana. In third place, entry number 385 with a weight of 1429. SFF Mona Lisa Reward AV215, owned by Skyler Ward of New Paris, Ohio. Fourth place, entry number 381. Miley Uncomfer. In fifth place, entry number 388. Brady Mullenhaney. We'll bring these two early spring heifer calves back in, and uh, I'm just going to tell you real simple. I'm going to keep the pair together from that last class. I, I think in terms of just power and breeding opportunity, those two females offer the most. So, gentlemen in the hat, you'll be champion. Young lady that was second there in class would be reserved. Congratulations to them. Third and final call, class 42, Shorthorns. Third and final call, class 42, Shorthorns. And your early spring champion, Shorthorn Female, goes to entry number 374, Van SS Revival 703, exhibited by Bristol Bates of Chandlersville, Ohio. Your reserve champion goes to entry 379, Don Ruby 326, exhibited by Colton Greenhorn of Bellbrook, Ohio. This is your first call, class 43. Shorthorn's first call, class 43.
Second call, class 11, Charlais. Second call, class 11, Charlais. And your 55th National Junior Heifer Calf Champion in your Charlay Show goes to entry number 58, BRCHE MCC Hot Tamale 3502, owned by Macy Hoag of Illinois City, Illinois. Your reserve champion goes to entry number 42, Boy HL Lilo 350L, exhibited by Boyer Chilcattle of Seville, Ohio. Third and final call, class 11, Charlais. Third and final call, class 11. Two very big bodied, soft made fall heifer calves. And I like that about the females. And you have to really study them uh, to be able to see the differences. The gentleman's class winner, uh, I think, is a bit more appropriate in terms of her front one third, in terms of just sleekness and freshness to that female's front end. You really like the cow look to that female. Uh, to be that feminine and attractive and bold bodied, um, has a neat cow look to her, my kind of female. You could square her up ever so slightly on her back foot as she plants, but that's getting super, super nitpicky on a high quality, good made female. Female that stands there in second is similar in terms of boldness to her rib, but as you read her from her forerib forward, that female is a touch bolder through the point of her shoulder. Her shoulder blade lays further forward, not quite as girly and attractive as that one right there that wins the class, but appreciate the depth of the rib, the cow power that she has. Just want to see that female reach out of her knee and, and set that probably a little longer strided off behind, but two high quality females, good kind. Get out here in another exceptional class of these big breads. And that last circle there, in my opinion, only solidified the fact that this young lady's calf needed to win just in that last circle. If you were watching there, she's so much better there in terms of her shoulder and her knee and where everything lays on her skeleton and makes her more comfortable there as we ask those to go. Is she 100 right there in terms of her hawk and her pin set? You know, uh, we could square her up and just make her more genuine, but that's getting extremely critical of one that I like a lot of things about. When the young man's calf is standing here, and if you're 30 or 50 foot off of her, this is the one you want to gravitate towards. There's no doubt about it. This is what has kind of been painted as the perfect show cow, right? Long-necked, big-bodied, awesome, hind-legged. But to me, as we dive in and we start studying, she's the one of that initial pair that's set further forward in terms of her shoulder. She shows that there as we ask the cattle to go. And then me personally, I got her having her more genuine in terms of her shape 
you study the amount of condition she's carrying, I'd like to see her wider and just truer there in terms of her pen set. The young man's calf here in three. Uh, don't take this the wrong way because I mean it positively. She's down the middle of the road. You know, there's nothing that's going to reach out and grab you. But at the same time, you're like, man, that's a really solid animal. I mean, awesome in terms of her structure, really fresh about her condition, uh, presented very, very good. For me to kind of edge her above that one that goes ahead of you, or even both of them, we just got to have more extras. But I still appreciate her being the combination complete cattle within this particular drive. The calf that comes here in four is the big, stout, long one, right? Uh, awesome in terms of their muscle and how much power and just uh, and and just natural width that she brings to the table and ties together uh, with an awesome look up front. As we asked those cattle to go on that last lap there, uh, she was the one that became the most concerning about her spine and her structure. Young lady's calf going there, wide built one, meat and potatoes, just, you know, awesome in terms of her body, just too restricted about her structure. The same goes for the young lady's calf here. Uh, you know, for me, that one's a little longer, a little smoother, but she's also one that's a little tighter about her, uh, about her forespine because of how she's built in terms of her shoulder. And then the young man's calf that we round out with, coming with a nice udder we have to respect that about her but for me at this stage in the game we got to have more body and that would allow her to balance better from the side First call in class 12, Charlay's first call in class 12. Third and final call, class 43, Shorthorns. Third and final call, class 43, Shorthorns. This is your first call, class 46 and 49, Shorthorns. First call, class 46 and 49. Obviously only a trio of them, but I'm very comfortable with the pair of cattle that we have out here at the top end of this class in terms of their type and kind. They're both moderate, they're 
good bodied type of cattle. To me, the young lady's female had the, the decided advantage uh, in terms of her shoulder design. I thought she kind of stayed more relaxed there about her four spine as we asked those cattle to go. And she's also just a stout, burly one. Uh, there's a lot to that animal. Am I telling you she's perfect? No, I'd like to tweak her. I'd like to see her just stay square as she comes right at me. But the young man's female here is also a little bit far forward in her shoulder. She's rocked a little forward there in her knee and that causes her to kind of come a little out of balance as well as we ask the cattle to go uh, but she was still the stouter bone the bigger footed um, just more burly option here of the remaining cattle the young man's calf here in third is one that is long and extended and definitely fresh uh, for me we just got to have her better moving off of both ends of her skeleton Second call, class 46 and 49 Shorthorns. Second call, class 46 and 49 Shorthorns. This is your second call, class 12 Charlays. Second call, class 12 Charlays. First call, class 15 Charlays. First call, class 15. Your class seven results from your Charlay show in first place, entry number 69, weighing 1,111 pounds, RF Miss Mora, 2331, exhibited by Trace Ritter of Herman, Missouri. In second place, entry number 75, with a weight of 990 pounds, WGBCC CLT Berkeley, 240P, exhibited by Brecky J. Bernard of Fooslin, Illinois. Third and final call, class 12, Charlays. Third and final call, class 12. Second call, class 15, Charlays. Second call, class 15. Sometimes you kind of have to give to get and to get the soundness that I like and the squareness at the ground, I'm going to give up some power. Um, I'm going to call this one excellent in terms of maternal build and in terms of how she sets the ground and, gets out and goes, she's superb there. Um, she excels a female that stands here in second in terms of her knee structure, in terms of her front end structure. And every time when those cattle stop, she stops more correctly on her front wheels. And it's because her shoulder blade and shoulder angle sets in better. Um, now, with that said, that maternal build, we have a bit of flatness there. And the power advantage goes to her heifer in second. She's the big top, big ended one. But when she just gets out and goes, and, and, and I told the young lady, I, I said, you know what I'm going to pick on. On her for us it is because when she stops she opens her front end up and it's because her shoulder blade lays a hair further forward this young lady's wanted somebody I love watching show and, and that heifer's giving her fits but I know she can get it right that heifer is big and stout and burly and powerful and gonna make a whale of a cow I like all those things about her but when you study and compare those two every time that big second place female stops she just stands wide with her front end open and I want to realign her there Heifer in second, um, or third rather, 
you know, you like the, the size, you like the, just the dimension of this female. I'd like to change her in her head. She's really plain headed and, and just not as attractive up through that front one third comparative to those three or two right in front of her. She's very complete otherwise. And, and I considered using her um, as high as winning the class, but I'm gonna be frank with you, I just had some hard decisions in this class. This next female is just really, really stout and powerful. You have to like the power and the rib shape of this female. She's pretty big for me, and I guess that's where I had to make my decision is she's pushing the upper echelons for me and my personal kind of decision making of what I buy. I like the power of this female. I like the sound of this, soundness of this female, but I think she's going to be one that's pretty big in terms of frame, in terms of added performance. Next female is one that's probably a bit more attractive through her front one-third, doesn't have near the rib shape or dimension of power as that one right in front of her, that when you back away from female there's not as much rib depth she's really round rib I uh, just not she's a bit more tubular um, in her rib shape relative to some of those other cattle right in front of her we body her down through her center part of her body one here that comes next is a longer cannon later maturing female that's just flatter in her overall design beautiful in terms of just that extension you see through her front one-third want to pull her apart in her fore rib in particular she gets quite a bit flatter there right from her shoulder into her mid rib very attractive not a unique breeding piece. Next female that comes around is a bit more conservative in terms of frame size. Her advantage over the female we conclude with, I think there's more of her in terms of top shape and through the center part of her quarter. We want to change that female, how she handles her pasture and is just relax her to set there a bit better. Really long spine female to conclude the class, has some shape to her. Again, we want to power up in terms of bone work. You just realign how she sets to the ground. Uh, as we get out here in this particular drive, I, I think the young lady's female brought itself to the top and did so rather handily just in terms of freshness of condition and being able to combine that with the right type of body shape still being stout. That one's extremely agile there off of a rear end structure. Is there is there you know a tweak that you'd like to make in her front end build? Yeah, we'd like to lay that shoulder back ever so slightly, but I thought that she was the stout powerful fresh version of what we've been looking for all day the young lady's calf here in two is one that i love from the side awesome in terms of her silhouette and how everything fits together very smooth about her shoulder and transitions awesome back into her forerib one i'd like to dial her back a little bit in terms of her teat size and just uh, placement maybe and one that I'd like to freshen up a shot there in terms of her condition and when we stepped in behind that initial duo of them I, I wish there was just a shot more just real dimension down low down through that one's underpinning the young lady's uh, calf here in three is the exact opposite she's the moderate stout meat and potatoes one that certainly got a lot of dimension and spread to her for me and my personal liking i'd like to see her a shot bigger i'd like to clean her chest up and just dial that condition back and i feel like that would also kind of smooth her up there about her shoulder the young lady's calf here uh, is one that when she gets her stopped and parked can give you a very good look especially when she kind of gets her loined and lays that top down in her when you ask those cattle when you ask that cattle to go to me though that her problems arise she gets a little bit more uncoordinated her shoulder goes further forward the young lady's rolling heifer that's going to round us out big and long very deep bodied actually still for me, she was the one that was kind of the flattest and a little bit two-dimensional in terms of the shape that she brought to the table. And if we are going to go with the flatness and just decide to go more that route, we've got to be sounder, and I didn't see that in her. If you know me, you know that I like cattle that uh, can work in both the show ring and, the, and in the pasture, and it's kind of a passion of mine to try and build those kind of cattle. And it starts with soundness, and it starts with the right maturity. And I think you have to have cattle that have some doability and some durability. And that's what why the soundness piece is so important to me, and the rib shape piece is so important. And I think this pair of females that we have out here do that really, really well. What separates them is muscle shape. And the female that wins the first class, she just simply is a stouter female. She's going to be our champion. The gentleman that wins the second class is going to be reserve division. Congratulations to both the gentlemen.
Third and final call, class 15, Charlais. Third and final call, class 15. Third and final call, class 46 and 49. Shorthorns, third and final call, class 46 and 49. Results of Class 8 of your Charlotte show in first place entry number 87 with a weight of 1,233 pounds, 201 PRF Beauty, 201, owned by Amelie Bergeron of New Iberia, Louisiana. In second place, entry number 90 with a weight of 1,255 pounds. Druins, Adeline, 908, exhibited by Kylan Oaks of Tologa, Oklahoma. In third place, entry number 83. Druins Gin D105, exhibited by Isaac Clay Montgomery of Lancaster, Kentucky. In fourth place, entry number 86, Kara Brooks. Fifth place, entry number 85, J.C. Marie Husky. In sixth place, entry number 32, Alyssa Meyer. Seventh place, entry number 89, Gracie Weinenberg. In eighth place, entry number 92, Jordan Shelton. Your senior heifer calf champion goes to entry number 69, RF Miss Mora, 2331, exhibited by Trace Ritter of Herman, Missouri. Your reserve champion goes to entry number 87, 201 PRF Beauty, 201, exhibited by Amelie Bergeron of New Iberia, Louisiana. Trio of females out here, and as you analyze them in terms of just body dimension and rib and muscle, they all have enough. And then you have to begin to kind of sort through on design and balance and extra extension and length of body and just overall power. Uh, and the top pair goes to the female, the advantage that goes to the female that wins the class. And, and as you look at her, there's just more of her in terms of length. And I'd like to design in terms of as she gets out and goes, how she plants her high leg probably a bit more appropriately. The yellow tinge female is one that you like in, in terms of completeness. She's big bodied, she's attractive, she's just shorter and more compact. We want to lengthen that female out. She gets out and goes, she probably has a little more curvature to her hind leg to stay sound forever, but just something that's descriptive and just a bit more curvature there to her hind wheels. And then the big female we conclude with, as she goes away from you, a bit tangle legged she gets closed up and really rotates her hocks in for as big as she is, need a bit more base width on that female. Getting down to the short rows here on the short horn side of thing, and uh, we get this division out back out here and obviously uh, if you're paying attention you've seen that I'm studying two of them I think it comes down to these two class winners on each end of the lineup uh, 
they, they both represent a lot of the things that we've been talking about all day. I think there's differences in them. I think there's one that's a shot sounder, uh, and especially in how she's built about her shoulder. I think there's one that's a shot just punchier and burlier and maybe a little bigger footed. Uh, and I think you can kind of decide which way you're going to go. Uh, I think it's extremely close. Uh, my hat's off to you exhibitors. Let's give them a round of applause and I'll show you how I like them. First call in class 16, Charlay's first call in class 16. Results of class 43 of your Shorthorn Show in first place, entry number eight, weighing 1,598 pounds. Steck WSCC Chelsea HC 253K, exhibited by Carter Cornegy of Tulsa, Oklahoma. In second place, entry number 427 with a weight of 1,568, Millbrook Veronica FB 3K, exhibited by Alexa Turner of Mahomet, Illinois. In third place, entry number 429 with a weight of 1542, CSF Margie 2210, exhibited by Jacqueline Thomas of Pikeville, Tennessee. Fourth place, entry number 430, Alyssa Carter. Fifth place, entry number 426, Caroline Jordan. Second call, class 16, Charlays. Second call, class 16, Charlays. We're going we're gonna to keep this duo just how they came in to us. The young ladies, Rome female is one that I think is just better balanced. She's better constructed, and that just allows her to be the higher uh, quality option within this particular pair. The young man's red heifer here does have a stout, soft hind leg and a really good body shape. We just kind of need a couple more bells and whistles for her to kind of take it to the next level. They are our uh, respective division champions and reserves. So let's give them a round of applause as they exit. Third and final call, class 16, Charlay's third and final call, class 16.
This is your first call for all champion and reserve champion shorthorn females. First call, all champion and reserve champion shorthorn females to the makeup arena. We have, we have one cow calf and a three year old that uh, obviously is definitely doing her job. Uh, we have to appreciate the rig that she comes to us in. Very easy flush and very good in her body shape. And she's transitioning that over into her uh, calf here. A very long and elegant, very pretty calf. Uh, very nice pair. Yeah, we'd like to just tighten that cow up in terms of her teat size, but uh, definitely a very high quality pair. Let's give them a round of applause. First call, class 19A, Charlene's first call, class 19A. Folks ringside, let's put our hands together for our appreciation for these May females. Uh, really nice set of cattle, top to bottom in this class. And, and you know, in just terms of cow power, uh, I think that uh, they deserve some appreciation. So let's put our hands together, show our appreciation here on the Charlet side. Female that wins the class is just an extremely complete female. Um, when you look at her and study her foot shape and design at the ground and, and how square built she is, and, and you talk about in terms of chest floor width and how wide she is um, at, there in her chest floor and then still wide at it from stifle to stifle, but yet with that added width, she's extremely nice at the point of her shoulder and how she ties that power in. So very attractive, very nicely made, very fresh female. Female that stands there in second, you can say she's maybe just a little longer hip, longer spine kind of a female. Doesn't have the power in, in terms of bone and footwork of the female right there in front, but I appreciate that female because she's a whale of a cow. She's wide pinned, she's stout built, and, and very, very fresh. Next couple of females, uh, you know, they're big bodied, they're soft, they're, and you appreciate the added rib shape you have in terms of depth of rib. Uh, from fore rib back to rear rib. I want to lean that female up. She's one that's laying, showing us some other development there, but really what you want to do is lean her up. Uh, she gets a little plainer through her chest floor. She goes away from you. She wants to roll on the outside of her heel. Shorter sided female that's highly presented comes next. She's one that pushes some brisket. She's a little rounder in her hip. Want to lengthen that female out. As she gets out and goes, she wants to open up on her front because of that added brisket. But love the depth around depth and roundness to her rib. Lots of things you have to appreciate on her. Tuck her chest floor back in just a little. Then one that comes next, boxy and stout in her rib. You want to tidy this female up in terms of her navel. Just a little plainer in her design, but very functional and practical in her kind. Gets out and goes very adequately, as does this next one. This female is just a bit plainer in terms of her head and neck and through the lower part of her brisket. Appreciate the added length that she has, extension. She gets out and goes. She's very soft structured. Um, you like that about her. Just want to make her a bit more attractive up front. Once again, all champion and reserve champion shorthorns to the makeup arena. At this time, we will now introduce your shorthorn herdsman of the year. Each year, exhibitors vote on the shorthorn herdsman of the year. This year, we have a duo. Jake Nickel and Jackson Schrag have both spent their entire lives growing up, making connections, and becoming who they are today because of the shorthorn breed. Two years ago, when Jake proposed to Jackson's sister at this very show, they went from being great friends to officially family. Shrag Nickel Show Cattle was then born when both families decided they were stronger together. The logical next step was to merge each other's cow herds together. 
Since then, Jake and Jackson have put together two production sales and taken care of too many show heifers to count. Both have their own very unique skill sets that only complement each other. If you know Jake, you know that he is a natural born salesman who can talk to anyone. And if you know Jackson, you know that he will spend all day clipping at the shoots. Jake and Jackson have a common goal of exhibiting short horns at the highest level possible and will continue to strive to do so the rest of their lives. The 2023 Lawrence Grathwall Herdsman of the Year is sponsored by the Shorthorn Foundation. Congratulations to Jake Nickel and Jackson Trag on being selected by their peers for this special award. It is well deserved. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for our Shorthorn Herdsman of the Year, Jake Nickel and Jackson Trag. I just want to make a couple comments. This is one of the great awards, I think, that is given by the, the men and women in the barn. Their, their peers vote on this. Everybody in the barn votes on this. And it's well-deserved. It's a lot of hard work. Probably we need to give everybody that's been working this whole week on these shorthorn cattle to make them look the way they look and be presented the way they've been presented. And these two are the standouts for this year. We really appreciate their effort. They make our breed look great, and they, and they make us all look great within ourselves. Thank you. We come back into this division. I think there's one female that's exceptional in terms of balance and soundness and completeness, power. Young lady in the red sweater, congratulations, you're going to win this division. Um, that one's really good at the ground. She's really good in terms of just show ring look and cow, ring, cow pasture uh, opportunity there. I like that female. Your decision gets quite a bit closer on the reserve. They're, the two females are very different in, in type and how they're built and, and condition-wise. I'm going to take another look here uh, and then make my decision. Second call, Class 19A, Charlene. Second call, Class 19A. Would the exhibitor of the purebred shorthorn bull please make your way to the makeup arena? Once again, the exhibitor of the purebred shorthorn bull please come to the makeup arena. Third and final call, class 19A, Charlay. Third and final call, class 19A.
your class 12 results of your Charlotte show in first place, weighing 1,540 pounds. And also your champion intermediate female goes to entry number 110, AC Miss Pearl 2502, exhibited by Jade A. Scringer of East Liverpool, Ohio. In second place, entry number 107, and also your reserve champion intermediate Charlotte female, Weighing 1,530 pounds goes to, to BSCC Miss Carly Ray, 203K, exhibited by Kix W. Lee of Gillum, Arkansas. In third place, entry number 112, weighing 1,489 pounds, DCC Miss Devil's Angel, 2214, exhibited by Camille Asmus of Houston, Texas. Fourth place, entry number 105, Lindsay Franklin. Fifth place, entry number 102, Rockin' K. Cattle. In sixth place, entry number 109, Shelby Pearl. As we get back out here for your champion, uh, Shorehorn female, uh, started the day off and told you it was my pleasure uh, to be out here for through these cattle, and I honestly mean that uh, from the bottom of my heart. Uh, it's been an absolute uh, dream come true. Uh, I can't thank the North American and the Shorehorn Association uh, nearly enough for giving me the opportunity to come out here and do this. Um, with that being said, the cattle have been absolutely phenomenal. I would have never expected anything less because uh, this right here, in my opinion, and for me personally, has always been the granddaddy of them all. Uh, you know, when you come on these green chips, there's a prestige and there's a certain level of quality uh, that's expected. And I feel like, uh, you know, this is the exact representation of why that is, uh, you know, that is what it is. Um, with that being said, a um, couple things that I've got to say. Um, I apologize. I'm uh, going to try to make it through this. Uh, first and foremost, and uh, number one will always be uh, any time I get this microphone and I have this type of a stage, uh, I ask myself why, you know, why, why do I get this opportunity? And, uh, you know, there's only, uh, there's only one answer that continues to uh, arise, and that's, uh, that's because the good Lord continues to bless me. Um, so first and foremost, uh, all the honor, the glory uh, goes to him because without him, uh, I wouldn't be where I am today. Um, with that being said, um, he has absolutely uh, blessed me in a tremendous way. Um, the biggest blessings of my life are uh, sitting here ringside. He blessed me with an absolutely amazing wife uh, that I could could not live without, and two boys that have been the absolute biggest pleasure of my life. Uh, my family has been absolutely uh, incredible and have given me every opportunity that I've ever wanted. Um, and without the good Lord and without him blessing me with those people, uh, there's no way that I, would, that, that I would have this opportunity. 
Uh, I apologize for getting choked up, but we make we make our living in business. This is how I feed my family. This is how I make my living. So I hope you understand just how serious that I take uh, putting this microphone in my hand and getting to evaluate your cattle. With that being said, uh, you know, we got we had cattle exhibiting in the Angus show this morning, cattle that were exhibiting in the Key and Lemmy's, and uh, I also couldn't do this without an absolutely phenomenal crew in the back. Um, you know, I got several of some of my very best friends back there that always uh, step up to the plate and help me make things possible. So without them, I would not be able to be out here. Um, it's been an absolute honor. Uh, this is something that I will never forget. Uh, it's my first time being able to evaluate here in Freedom Hall on these green shavings. And I promise you, it'll be something that uh, will never be forgotten for me personally. With that being said, if you don't mind, let's put our hands together, show these exhibitors and breeders some love. I'll go show you my Grand and Reserve Champion effort. And congratulations to your grand champion, Shorthorn Female, goes to entry number 374, Van SS Revival 703, exhibited by Bristol Bates of Chandlersville, Ohio. And your reserve grand champion, Purebred Shorthorn Female, goes to entry number 405, CF Crystal Lucy, 230RKRX, exhibited by Paige Wickard of Wilkinson, Indiana. I apologize. I'm going to hop back on the mic one more time. I, I didn't realize, but uh, this uh, prestigious award, they, they pick a supreme here on the shorthorn side of things. Obviously, our champion bull that was selected earlier today, and then our champion female that was just selected. Let's give these two exhibitors a huge round of applause. I'll go out and select your supreme.
top to bottom, just an incredible set of, of females. And this is one of those classes that uh, I think the smartest thing I could do would be to take them home and calve them out and then come back and tell you which one's the best one because uh, I, I think there's a lot of rib shape and a, and a lot of durability in these cattle from top to bottom and compliments to the breeders. But there's one female that I never had a doubt on what I was going to do with her, and that's the one that wins the class. Um, she's the freshest. She's really attractive up front in, in terms of the flatness and length to her sh neck. Um, does she have some shoulder? I, I'm not going to argue with anybody, but also I'm going to tell you that she has the power when you look at her from pin to pin and down at the ground in terms of stifle width. That's a stout beast, and, and she's not very fat. And, and if she was fatter, you probably wouldn't see as much shoulder that, as you see. Um, but I think she's fresh, she's bold ribs, she's sound, she's going to make a whale of a cow, and, and I like that about that female. Female here that stands here in second, I, I think she rivals her in terms of rib shape and curvature to her rib and just the stoutness of feature that she has. She gets, but she does carry a bit more condition, and, and because of that added condition, she, you see it in her neck, you see it in her jowl right underneath her throat and in her brisket. Um, maybe it's doability, maybe Maybe it's just that she's been pushed a little bit, but I like the, just the freshness of front end that I saw in our class winner, but I love the rib shape. I like the reach of a structure on this female that's in second, really good hip, lots of power in that female. One that's very different, and you have to decide what to do with this female. She, she's pretty maternal built, um, and, and that color, fat color throws her off just a little bit. Um, but she's so long-sided and long-hipped, and the old-timers will tell you, you've got to have length to make pounds. And I think this female has some added length, and I just uh, opted to go ahead and let that be to her advantage. You could tuck her chest floor in ever so slightly. She's not as powerful over the top part of her hip relative to those ones right in front of her or the one right behind her but she's just very maternal built and she fits me really well next female you like in terms of rib to rib but from just center expanse you like her in terms of spine or just stifle width I want to tuck her chest plate or sternum just protrudes out a little bit for me and gets her off balance but big footed stout featured kind of a female next female is similar in terms of just foot shape and design and gets out and goes really well. She's one again that want to take that chest plate and tuck it back in. Some of those cattle, maybe we got them fat as babies and they still have some brisket. Maybe it's just that it's how they're designed. She's functional. I just want to chuck her in to balance her up some. This female I, I, that comes next is a bit of a challenge for me because she's so maternal and pretty and just level on her lines, big bellied but she's really flat, and I guess that's my concern. You read her at the lower part of her stifle, you read her in her forearm, just not as much muscle shape to that female. I'd like to give her a bit more expression. I think she's a unique breeding piece and lots of opportunity with her. And then we conclude with a female that has a bit more true muscle shape than the one right in front of her. She gives up some just in terms of bells and whistles added just carriage to her structure relative to some of those others. Is she stout? Is she usable? Absolutely. Top Autumn, that's been the best class we've had all day today. And your supreme purebred shorthorn winner and a winner of the George Garwin Brown Memorial Trophy goes to Bristol Bates of Chandlersville, Ohio. Once again, congratulations on purebred shorthorn exhibitors here today for another successful show. And we thank you for joining us here at the 50th anniversary of the North American. First call, class 19B, Charlais. First call, class 19B.
Second call, class 19B, Charlays. Second call, class 19B. Results of class 15 of your Charlay show in first place, entry number 34, weighing 1,643 pounds, AC Cricket 2207, exhibited by Alyssa C. Meyer of Clinton, Tennessee. In second place, entry number 116, weighing 1,499 pounds, Boy Kit Kat 245K, exhibited by Maddie Harward of Richfield, North Carolina. Third place, entry number 115, CC's Fancy Girl 2237, exhibited by Riley J. Revels of Webster, Florida. In fourth place, entry number 117, exhibited by Anna P. Link of Rio, Illinois. Fifth place, entry number 119, Grace Lemingager. In sixth place, entry number 118, John T. Davis III. In seventh place, entry number 33, Reed Naughton. Two incredible females here at the top, and, and I think about it in my mind, I always kick them out in the pasture when I get to these big junior yearlings and these breads, and I think about what are they going to look like in the pasture, and, and man, these two females are going to be really cool a, a, as cows, and I like that about them. The difference between the two is pretty basic. The female that wins the class is more correct out of her knee and her front foot. She sets down squarer. The weight of, the, of her foot on all four feet is very flat and very square, and because of that, she tracks truer off of her front end. Um, just a superbly balanced, big-bodied, maternal, good female. She's my kind. Female that stands here in second is maybe just a little longer hipped, maybe a little longer bodied. But as you watch that female as she goes and just wants to pigeon toe ever so slightly, the weight of her foot is on the outside of her hoof wall on all, all four feet, and I'd like to change that just a little bit. But very level hip, very attractive, good built, uh, and, and she's sound. I'm just getting really critical in some real small details to make some decisions. 
female here that uh, I told a young man I like her name. Her name is Bad Barbie, and that's, that's a cool name. You have to like this female in terms of mass and, and dimension. Um, she pushes the limits. Excuse me. She pushes the limits for me just in terms of scale. Um, that's going to be a big cow to run, and you're going to have to have some pretty big, pretty hefty resources. But with that said, you like that female in terms of just rib to rib mass and dimension, big, wide pin, square hipped female. She gets out, moves, and she lumbers around a little bit. And I think she's kind of just at that point in her life, she's tired of being a show heifer. Um, this next female doesn't tie in but from her top of her scapula into her forerib with the strength and power of that big massive female that stands right here in front of her. And I guess that's, I just pull her apart, maybe blend her a little bit better from her forerib uh, into the top of her shoulder. But again, big bodied, stout, square pin, good moving kind of a female. Get into one that's a bit more rigid in her movement. But we'd just like to see this female have a bit more ease as she gets out and goes. Um, you can see she's uncomfortable in her spine when she goes, and that contributes all the way to the ground, how she handles herself. Um, just want to give her a bit more angularity off of all ends and move with more comfort. Um, maybe a bit flatter, too. We could freshen her up about her tail head. Next female is, again, one that gets a bit shorter strided, and it's because of the angles and slopes are wrong on, on her structure. We want to see her have just a bit more angle to her front end and Consequently, because she is straighter fronted, she's a little shorter necked, it just, and she compensates by opening her front end up some. But appreciate, again, she has some power. She has some hip width to her. She actually has more true muscle read than the one right in front of her. And then we conclude with kind of a meat and potatoes female, as how I describe her. You want to lean this female up on her chest floor, but is she functionally sound? Yes, she is. Is she big barreled? Yes, she is. So going to be practical, just not as attractive as those ones up in front of her. Without a doubt, the stoutest division that we've had yet today in our Charlay female show. And as a Charlay breeder myself, we have just a, a handful of Charlay cows. But this is the kind that uh, I like in terms of just robust ribbed and really good at the ground and good footed. Um, they're females that can go out and make bulls. They can make females and, and have a lot of diverse mating opportunities. That's important for me. Very different, um, and, and I'll say this, all four of the females I like out here quite well, and I'd be proud to own any one of the four, so I think that's the biggest compliment that I can give to you as Charlay breeders. But the two females out here are, are quite different, and in terms of condition, there's some differences. Um, there's a little bit of difference between the two in terms of how they handle their front end structure. Um, and so there's probably just, some, like I said, some nitpicky things. I think it comes down to just personal preference of, of which one hits you the hardest. Young lady that wins the second class, you're going to win the division. Young lady that wins the first class, you're going to be reserved. So congratulations to these two young ladies. Four phenomenal females in this division. Congratulations to all of you.
First call, class 23, Charlays. First call, class 23, Charlays. This is also a first call for all champion and reserve champion Charlay females. First call for all champion and reserve champion Charlay females. Second call, class 23. Charlene, second call, class 23. This young man's leading the tank out here, and he's doing a whale of a job leading her out. And she is just massive bodied. And for as much mass and dimension as she has, she can still get out and track and has some softness to her skeleton. You really like that about that female. Uh, there's some small things you can nitpick on her. She has just a little bit of chest, as, as some of those cattle do when they get to this part. And she does want to open up ever so slightly as she stands. But she is wide cavity, wide body. She transitions more appropriately uh, from, from her top of her scapula into her forerib. And some of that we can see because this heifer in second is a little leaner kind of a female. She's obviously a bit more moderate kind of a female. And, and frankly, it's intriguing to me. I mean, there's almost 300 pounds difference between those two females. And in my mind, I'm going to be honest with you, the running cost, uh, it, 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 you know, you have to ask yourself when is too big, too big. I considered swapping them, but I think there's a difference in terms of forerib and and just doability that I read in your rib of this female. Love the soundness, love the freshness, love the just the, the design of that female, not as much for rib. Female that stands here in the third hole, very practical. She hits her tracks nice enough. She's level hip. She just runs into two females that are massive in terms of dimension and power.
third and final call, class 23, Charlay's third and final call, class 23. This is also your last call for all champion and reserve champion Charlay females. Last call, all champion and reserve champion Charlay females to the makeup arena.
I'll be honest with you, this is probably the most challenging class uh, that I've started in a long time. Uh, of, I was in Billings, Montana a couple weeks ago and had a couple of challenging classes. Um, get to get out and see and, and do a lot of classes. And, and you just have to finally make a decision of, of sort of, and, and Clint and I talked about this before the show, is sort of like you'd own them. And, and what I see in this female that wins the class is a lot of unique pieces. And I guess that is the, the concern that I have is that there's times when she gets out and goes, she pulls herself together. And then there's times where she gets just a little soft topped here. And, and she's one that I would change that right behind her shoulder. That's where I'd strengthen her. And I've talked about that a lot today. But go ahead and lead her out. When she gets out and goes, this female, what's so cool about her is she's one of the soundest structured females we've seen today. That thing can flat get out and move. For, for as stout as she is, the flexibility and the softness to her structure is, is, makes her pretty unique. Um, I'm going to be the first to admit that I like how the heifer second hooks up from the top of her shoulder, scapula, and her spine it, it is more correct for me. But she's also one that's a little plainer over the top of her neck, a little plainer faced. So there's some give and take because that one's kind of a freak. This one's a little more conservative, um, so there's some give and take. I like the cow look to this female in terms of softness. That softness today might be to her disadvantage because it makes her just a little plainer over the top. She's a touch gathered up in her teats, but excellent cow prospect. I like her really, really well. And then you get into a big stout featured female. Um, it, just in terms of getting out and going, she does a lots of things from her midrib back right. She's excellent in terms of her hip design and pin width. Pushes her sternum out, her chest floor out just a little bit. I like to tuck that in. Um, she's pretty bold about her head, neck. That comes when you have one with that much power. I swapped this one. This female is probably not quite as comfortable on the go. There's things that, that, that you watch her in terms of her structure. Her front feet want to pigeon just a little bit. She comes up at her spine ever so slightly. But that's nitpicking on one that's long spine, ultra fresh, big pinned. Lots of good in that female too. This one that comes going away here, uh, flat necked and, and attractive from the side, but that flatness also happens at the top of her hip. She doesn't have as much power at the top, doesn't travel away from you with as much base width as some of those others, but still sound good maternal kind of a female. Big scaled one comes here, doesn't show us as much lower, dropped her udder, maybe not as far along. Very attractive. I like the hip structure. She just runs into some cattle in front of her. I, I think there's some give and take for me. She hit me here, is not as far along in calf. One that's long fronted, um, good built. I just didn't see as much calf in her, as much dropped her lower rib compared to some of those others in front of her. That class is, pro I'll probably replay that class in my mind uh, a lot because I think there's lots of quality from top to bottom, good cattle. Your Class 16 results of your Charlet show in first place go to entry number 129, weighing 1,575 pounds. L-Man Miss Shelley, 251K, exhibited by Sarah Sullivan of Dunlap, Iowa. In second place, entry number 130, weighing 1,670 pounds. Wise Callie, 12K, exhibited by Jenna Tullock of Pearl, Iowa. In third place, entry number 126, Andrew Chapman. Fourth place, entry number 124, Levi Henshaw. In fifth place, entry number 36, Briley Miller. In sixth place, entry number 125, Brody Burke. Seventh place, entry number 127, Ella Rollins. Your junior champion, Charlie Female, goes to entry number 129, L-Man Miss Shelley, 251K, exhibited by Sarah Sullivan of Dunlap, Iowa. Your reserve champion goes to entry number 34, AC Cricket, 2207, exhibited by Alyssa C. Meyer of Clinton, Tennessee.
Your class 19A results. In first place, entry number 136, weighing 1,715 pounds, GRDT Miss Charlotte 223K, exhibited by Landry J. Tibbetts of Mineral Point, Wisconsin. In second place, entry number 139, JBE Miss Carmen 202K, exhibited by Hayden E. Englert of Washington, Kansas. Third place, entry number 140, PHF Fantasy 2122, exhibited by Micah P. Nunn. We kept, we kept those two together in division. I, I just think there's too much good. They're very different in, in their type and, and just their build, but too much good to separate those two females. Your Class 19B results of your Charlet show. In first place and also your champion, senior Charlet female, goes to entry 144, LJR Miss Kari 318K. Exhibited by Mackenzie K. Neal of Lewisburg, Ohio. In second place, and also your reserve champion, Senior Charlet Female, goes to entry 143, Boy Kelly, 238K. Exhibited by Sarah Sullivan of Dunlap, Iowa. Third place, entry number 147, exhibited by Levi Henshaw. Fourth place, entry number 149, Carter Hogue. Fifth place, entry number 146, Rankin Dunn. And sixth place, entry number 148, Alexis Miley. Now entering the Charley ring is your class 23 of your cow-calf pairs. This is your first call for your Charley Bulls, class 26A, 26B, and 26C. Once again, first call, class 26A, 26B, and 26C of your Charley Bulls.
as a production unit, I, I like the female that we're going to lead with. And when I say production unit, what I mean is, is when I look at the, both the cattle and evaluate them, I like the balance, the eye appeal of that female um, in terms of hip and design and rib and soundness. I think she contributes all of that, the same package to the calf at side. So together as a unit, I like them really, really well. Female that stands in second, taking nothing away from her because she is a very attractive, long spine, level hipped, perhaps more powerful female when you stand immediately behind her. And I like her calf. She disappoints you just a little bit in terms of what you see in terms of udder there. That's a female that we might want to have just a bit more show or showing more milk volume, more milk productivity. But I do like the heifer calf at side. I do think she's doing a nice job with that calf. I just like the udder design of that female that went into the class a little bit better. Big, stout, high-performing, big-bodied cow stands in third. Similar heifer calf. And what I'd like to change in that cow is just the shoulder design. She comes to us in, in good condition. And with that, you see a bit more roll to her scapula. Um, doing a nice job in terms of performance with the calf. But I think we're going to have the same design of shoulder in that calf. So that's where I'd like to redesign both of them. And then a female here in fourth. Good kind of a cow in terms of sound, in terms of length and extension. A little plain in terms of how she's presented relative to some of these others, but a useful kind of a cow. I think she's one that's going to do a nice job, and she is doing a nice job with that heifer calf at side. Results of Class 23 of your cow and calf pair division of your Charlay show. In first place in your champion, cow and calf pair, goes to entry number 161, JF Bay HSC, Cardi Brightside, O2J, exhibited by James Forder of Hillenster, Texas. Your reserve champion goes to entry number 163, DCC Chicks Avante, 1904, owned by Camille Asmus of Houston, Texas, and Kevin Ardunan of Caldwell, Texas. In third place, entry number 160, MJ Miss Lady Ease 105, exhibited by Kaylin Oaks of Taloga, Oklahoma. And in fourth place, entry number 159, JWF Gracie 9231, exhibited by Isaac Clay Montgomery of Lancaster, Kentucky. At this time now, ladies and gentlemen, we would like to reveal our show dedicatee, Mr. Wayne Templeton. Wayne Templeton grew up on his family farm in Graycourt, South Carolina. His father managed a Hereford farm in Orangeburg, South Carolina, on Caw Caw Plantation, where Wayne was first indoctrined into breeding and exhibiting cattle by working alongside his father. As a teenager in the late 1950s, Wayne would accompany the cattle show string to various livestock shows and would provide valuable leadership and assistance on show day. These ventures marked the very beginning of a notorious and successful 50-plus year breeding and promoting the Charlet breed. Wayne continued his prominence in the show ring and was a well-respected cattle judge and very co competent custom fitter. The Templeton family has produced and shown countless show winners over the years at all major livestock expositions and at several state fairs. For their hard work and dedication, the Templeton household won the Abbeville County Outstanding Farm Award in 2000, in addition to receiving several other county and state awards for his service and leadership to the county cattle industry. The South Carolina Charlays Association also bestowed an honorary lifetime membership to Wayne and his family in 2011. In August of 2022, most of the Templeton Cattle Company was dispersed with a few select animals being retained by Casey. It is interesting to note that the current herd traces back to the genetics that Wayne worked with and knew quite well. The LH Bar and Aviella Plantation, with some cattle representing more than 10 generations of Wayne's select breeding and stringent selection. Wayne Templeton has dedicated his entire life to the cattle industry, has been an avid supporter, prominent breeder, and everlasting promoter of the Charlet breed. The American International Charlet Association is proud to dedicate the 55th National Charlet Show to him. Representing Wayne this evening are Wayne Templechin Jr., his son, wife Libby, and Wayne's granddaughter. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together as we honor our show dedicatee, Wayne Templeton. The award this evening is being presented by AICA board member, Dr. Dan Eversall.
I'm not going to go through and, and talk all the cattle and all that kind of fun stuff, but um, just a, a few comments, uh, and a lot of you may not know this about me, but um, well, let me say this. I, I'm going to talk about legacies for just a minute, and, and um, I first showed Charlet cattle, and, and I hate to admit this, but I first showed Charlet cattle in this very ring in 1983. And um, I was part of the group that came with the LSU uh, kids. And, and what that is, is Louisiana State University brings 20 kids every year um, from South Louisiana. And, and I happen to be one of those kids. And, and that started and built a, a passion um, for me. And uh, if you've not ever had a dream to judge on the green chips or to do something in Louisville, um, it, it's, there's nothing else like it. There, there's nothing else like it. So um, thanks for to AICA for letting me be a be here today and be a part of that. But you know the rest of the Charlet legacy for me is, is um, I've been a part of some pretty big operations where a um, little old place called Camp Cooley where we sold about a thousand bulls a year of three breeds, and then um, I actually was part of a place called Silver Spur Ranch. And we ran about 15,000 cows and used Charlet bulls as our terminal bulls. So I tell you that it is, I come out here and, yeah, I love showing cattle. I absolutely love showing cattle. But I've been on an end of this that brings a little different perspective. Um, and that's part of why, you know, um, for me, soundness is so important and rib shape and doability. And yeah, there's some variability out here, um, but I can tell you they're all sound and they're all breeding pieces and that's important to me. And people, they dishonored Wayne Templeton and, and you think back in the Charlet world of people that were legacies. And Wayne is one of those guys and they mentioned Larry just a minute ago, but you hadn't grown up in the Charlet world if you hadn't ever run the ponies with Wayne Templeton and Larry. And uh, if some of you, you guys are probably way too young to remember that. There's not many, David, that would remember running the ponies with those guys. And there's things in this Charlet world that um, I think sometimes you guys, you youngsters, and I'll just call it like it is, you're missing some things. You need to go back and have some conversations with some of these Charlet breeders that have been around a long time and, and that understand the why that why we have power in these cattle and why it's important to keep the feet right and, and the why. And I guess that would be something I would offer um, and encourage folks, you young breeders that are out here. Um, I've been fortunate to, to, to get to travel the miles and have those discussions. So I'm confident in my picks that I'm going to go out and select. I'm confident in all the lineup out here because I can tell you they're sound, they're good footed, they're big bellied, and they're going to make production type beef cattle and that's what's important to me that's what's important for you as charlet breeders with that said i'm going to go out and pick you a pair of champions Congratulations to the 55th National Grand Champion, Charlay Female, goes to entry number 129, Elman Miss Shelley, 251K, exhibited by Sarah Sullivan of Dunlap, Iowa.
The reserve grand champion Charlotte Female Award goes to entry number 144, LJR Miss Carey 318K, exhibited by Mackenzie Neal of Lewisburg, Ohio. A big thank you to the grand champion female award sponsor, Hayden Farm, as well as the reserve grand champion Charlotte Female Award to Allison Charlays. Big thank you to our sponsors. This is your final call in class 26A, B, and C, Charlay Bulls. Final call, class 26A, B, and C, Charlay Bulls.
Once again, final call, class 26A, 26B, and 26C of your Charlotte Bulls. 26A, 26B, and 26C, please make your way to the Bank of Arena.
And now, ladies and gentlemen, we'd like to recognize the 2022 through the 2023 Show Animals of the Year. The AICA Show Animal of the Year program recognizes the top Charlotte Show Dam, Show Female, Show Sire, and Show Bowl. The program is based on accumulating points at the National Charlet Show, regional national shows, and designated Class A role of excellence shows and Class B role of excellence shows. Congratulations once again to the 2022 through 2023 Show Animals of the Year. The Show Female of the Year goes to Boy Smokin' Money, 200J, owned by Carter Hogue of Good Hope, Illinois. The show dam of the year goes to Boy Smoke and Money 7311, owned by Carter Hogue of Good Hope, Illinois, and Boyer Show Cattle of Seville, Ohio. The show sire of the year goes to Eminem Outsider 4003 PLD, owned by Thomas Ranch of Herald, South Dakota, Boyer Show Cattle of Seville, Ohio, and Aces Wild Ranch LLC of Millsap, Texas. The show bull of the year goes to Cars Mr. Burnout 130P owned by Car Cattle Company of Webb City, Missouri, and Hatch, Warren, Texas. First call, Class 29A, Charlet Bulls. First call, Class 29A and 29B, Charlet Bulls. First call, Class 29A and B.
Two really young juvenile bull calves, and, and we like just the freshness on them. The young lady that wins, it, in terms of just right behind the shoulder, this bull calf, it, there's a little bit more expanse, and he's stronger right there, how he hooks from his shoulder back into his spine. Big, soft, middle calf, real attractive and sound. Long-bodied, really neat neck bull calf stands here in second. He's one right behind his shoulder. He doesn't hook up quite as good, a little bolder over the top of his shoulder. But I think this time uh, on both of these calves, and, and they could swap back and forth. Good pair of bull calves. Second call, class 29A and 29B. Shirley Bulls, second call, class 29A and 29B. Third and final call, class 29A and 29B, Shirley Bulls. Third and final call, class 29A and B. Results of class 26A in first place, entry number 171, KNS 11th hour 3911 L, exhibited by Rock and K. Kennel of Lexington, Virginia. In second place, entry number 169, LHC Blue No More 3043, exhibited by Long Haul Kennel of Hillsborough, Ohio. Big middle, soft design kind of calf to lead off here, and he's one you like from a side profile um, and, and just real attractive there. When he travels away from me, I, I'd probably pull him apart just a little bit, and as he goes away, kind of closes up down low, changed out about that guy. One that uh, I think has just worlds of future to him stands here in second, not as far along in terms of maturity, but in terms of quality and length and skeletal extension, really neat made kind of a guy there. Gets out and his foot placement is right. Uh, lots of future, lots of quality that guy. Just not quite as soft through his forerib and just easy look to it, easy soft look is that one ahead of him. Calf stands here in third. Very well presented, really attractive. He's the shortest sided calf. When you back away from him, shorter hipped and just shorter all the way through. We want to lengthen him out relative to those others, but balances up really well, nice rib shape to him. He and the calf that stands that would conclude with, want to change those guys structurally just in terms of how they get out and go. Guy that could we conclude with, he's got some power, big top, big hip guy. How he handles his back legs, he's not as confident and consistent as he goes away from you, not enough flex there back behind.
Results of Class 26B of your Charlotte Bull show in first place, weighing 855 pounds. Uh, entry number 172, HF Foolproof L35, exhibited by Levi Hinshaw of Secor, Illinois. In second place, weighing 731 pounds, entry number 178, LHC Blue Streak 310, exhibited by Long Haul Cattle of Hillsboro, Ohio. Third place, entry number 175, Triple SC Contraband 3L, exhibited by Sydney Allard of Sydney, Nebraska. Fourth place, entry number 174, White Rose Domino 325L, exhibited by White Rose Charlays of Clearwater, Minnesota. First call, class 32 and 33, Charlay Bulls. First call, class 32 and 33, Charlay Bulls. Nice trio of bull calves that are very different in terms of where they are, in terms of maturity. Uh, young ladies bull calf, when you read him, and, and I think he's a compilation of the other two calves and, and has some dimension to him, balances up really well in, in terms of travel. You watch him in terms of flex and angles. I think he's acceptable. Um, you might give him just a little more flex out of his pastern. Every once in a while he gets a little rigid. Uh, but I, again, big body, really attractive, well-balanced bull. And I think he, that added rib shape is the advantage here comparative to this calf in second. Calf in second is really expressive in his muscle shape and, and just a little rounder. Not as much uh, depth of rib is comparative to the calf we win with. But still, muscular, stout enough. Probably has just a little more cushion at his pastern comparative to our class winner. And this bull, uh, you know, real practical kind of an individual I'd, is what I'd call him. Going to be a bigger scaled bull. Um, when he gets out and moves, he hits his tracks relatively well. Stout ended, a little plainer in terms of his design, carries a little more sheath, touch more lower chest floor to him, but appreciate the performance. Um, that's going to be a bull that's going to be a, just a bigger scaled individual down the road. Second call, class 32 and 33, Charlay Bulls. Second call, class 32 and 33. Results of Class 26C of your Charlene Bulls in first place entry number 176, weighing 823 pounds. LHC Blue Crush 3180, exhibited by Long Haul Cattle of Hillsboro, Ohio. In second place, weighing 696 pounds, entry 177, KNS Actions Detrimental 3001, exhibited by Rock and K Cattle of Lexington, Virginia. In third place, entry number 181, exhibited by Nick DeChristian Farrell of Vienna, Ohio.
lot of variation in these cattle, and just this late, this late in the evening, it's going to be challenging to get those cattle to settle down, and I understand that. One calf, I think, that it, from a future prospect standpoint uh, is this oldest calf in this division. You read him uh, in terms of body, in terms of hip, and enough skeletal design. Uh, he's going to be our calf champion. So young lady right here that wins the oldest class, congratulations. He's going to win our first division. After that, for reserve, there's some decisions to be made. Um, you can decide, just kind of pick and choose there. Calf that uh, stands in the middle was the one I said that I liked in terms of rib shape and dimension. Change him up just a little bit on his back wheels uh, in terms of how he goes away from you. And then that calf that won the first class, it was one that just uh, not as far along in maturity and a little harder read right now. We're going to follow up and use a young man that wins the second class. So congratulations to those winners. Third and final call, class 32 and 33, Charlotte Bulls. Third and final call, class 32 and 33. This is your first call, class 37 and 40, Charlotte Bulls. First call, class 37 and 40. And your spring calf, Charlotte champion bull, goes to entry number 176. LHC Blue Crush 3180, exhibited by Long Haul Cattle of Hillsboro, Ohio. Your reserve champion goes to entry number 172, HF Foolproof L35, exhibited by Levi Henshaw of Secor, Illinois. trade-offs in this top pair of bulls. Length is an advantage at the bull here that wins the class and how he handles his front feet at the ground. He's square and truer in there. I think he's more consistent uh, in his foot placement and how he handles his pastern uh, when he goes away from you. I love the power and stout 
toughness of this bull that stands in second. Um, once he's a little straighter shoulder and he pigeon toes in, and as he gets out here, he just hadn't relaxed and he wants to ratchet up in his pasterns. But boy, if you want a big ended, stout, big bodied, kind of conservatively framed one, you can go to him, and I don't argue that pair very hard. Next bull is similar in terms of power and shape and just real dimensional kind of a calf, but he's also pretty bunched up, and that's where I'd change this guy. I just want to lengthen him out. He's fairly short cannon and short bodied, and that's not a real good combination, but you appreciate that he'll be probably pretty forage efficient and soft made. Bigger scaled, longer bodied, one that has more extensions concludes the class. Like all of that about him, but we really want to redesign the structure on this guy. He doesn't flex his hawk, doesn't get out and just have the ease of movement that we like to see. Second call, class 37 and 40, Charlay Bulls. Second call, class 37 and 40. Once again, third and final call, class 32 and 33. Third and final call, class 32 and 33. Results of class 29A of your Charlotte Bulls show. In first place, entry number 189, weighing 11.45, Lee J.F.R. Al Capone, exhibited by Kicks W. Lee of Gillum, Arkansas. In second place, weighing 1,115 pounds, entry number 187, W.C. W.G.B.C.C. Mr. Outrider 322, exhibited by Will G. Blankers of London Mills, Illinois. In third place, entry number 184, exhibited by Harris Livestock Farms of Hepler, Kansas. Real big body, big rib, deep soft kind of a calf here. And he's one that from his mid rib forward, I like him really, really well. From his, he can anyway, redesign him just a little bit in his hip and, and that steepness contributes to how he comes to the ground. Just not quite as square and soft at the ground as we'd like to see. Kind of gets a little tangled legged. He goes away from you, but sure enough, stout, muscled, and big body. Second call, class 37 and 40, Charlay Bulls. Second call, class 37 and 40, Charlay Bulls. Results of class 29B in first place, entry number 191, weighing 1,156 pounds. WC Dreammaker 3113, exhibited by Wright Charlings of Richmond, Missouri. Now entering the ring is a selection of your champion and junior bull calf. The hip design is really what separates these two bulls. The, the bull that wins the first class from his loin into his from, from hooks to pins, he's more comfortable there, and his skeleton is softer and more agile. And because of that, at how he comes to the ground, he's just truer and squarer there. So he's going to be our champion. Um, gets a little closer as you analyze and you look at those next two cattle because there's things structurally that you want to fix and. and maybe cha change up a little bit on both of them. I'm gonna go ahead and use the bull that was second in class. I think he's just a little sounder and softer made there on his hind wheels. Third and final call, class 37 and 40, Charlay Bulls. Third and final call, class 37 and 40. This is your first call, class 41 and 46, Charlay Bulls. First call, class 41 and 46. Congratulations to the 55th National Junior Calf Champion here in your Charlay Show. 
goes to entry number 189, Lee J.F.R. Al Capone, exhibited by Kicks W. Lee of Gillum, Arkansas. Your reserve champion goes to entry number 187, W.C. W.G.B. C.C. Mr. Outrider 322, exhibited by Will G. Blankers of London Mills, Illinois. A lot of mass and dimension in this calf that wins this class and just kind of a rancher bull in terms of being extra powerful and stout um, like the flex that he has in his hind wheel comparative to some of these others that we've seen and he balances up fairly well just a, a, a hair straighter in his knee and, and you could just give him a little bit more flex but that's being ultra critical on one that I think is pretty good and just a beef bull and stout and powerful and sound and attractive long spine really a, a bull that to me is very useful in his kind here maybe not the show ring appeal down low in his chest floor and his sheath but I think in terms of just get out and breed cows sound angular kind of bull that has some power would describe him Second call, class 41 and 46, Charlie Bull. Second call, class 41 and 46. Results of class 32 of your Charlotte Bull show in first place, weighing 1,507 pounds, entry number 196, AML Cars Roadhouse 220, exhibited by Car Cattle Company of Webb City, Missouri, and AM Livestock of Richmond, Kansas. In second place, entry number 195, weighing 1,242 pounds, LHC Resolution 2986, owned by Long Haul Cattle of Hillsboro, Ohio. Getting better as we go in terms of just look and stoutness and power of these cattle. Really good in terms of foot shape and design to this bull, in terms of power, in terms of muscle and bone. Big rib, extra long, attractive individual, nice calf. He'll be very competitive. Third and final call, class 41 and 46. Charlotte Bulls, third and final call, class 41 and 46. Results of class 33 of your Charlotte Bulls in first place, weighing 1,447 pounds. Entry number 201, Barron's Secret Copy, exhibited by Sarah E. Barron of Mount Vernon, Kentucky. Now entering the ring is a selection of your champion senior bull calf.
bull making the turn here has the advantage of just being hugely expressive and in, in terms of his muscle shape down his top. And when you get behind him through the center part of his quarter, he reads in his forearm to have lots of power. And still to be that stout, he, he's relatively nice to the point of his shoulder. As I said, you could give him just a little more inflection at his knee, but ultra powerful. Longer sided bull stands here in the second hole. He gives up some of that power right behind the shoulder and in his forerib. Um, that added length might be to his disadvantage here um, when you compare those two. Tidy him up in his sheath just a little bit. We're going to use the bull that wins the first class to win the division. Congratulations, young lady. Long, stretchy kind of a bull, I called him as he came in in class. Real useful kind of a guy. Gives up some in terms of just dimension, in terms of total width from rib to rib. We're going to follow up this bull that wins the second class. Congratulations to the young lady. And your 55th National Senior Calf Bull Champion goes to entry number 196. AML, AML Cars Roadhouse, 220, Exhibit of Vine Car, Cattle Company of Wem City, Missouri, and AM Livestock of Richmond, Kansas. Your reserve champion goes to entry number 201, Barron's Secret Copy, exhibited by Sarah E. Barron of Mount Vernon, Kentucky. Now entering the ring is class number 37 of your summer yearling Charlie Bowles. Third and final call, class 41 and 46. Charlay Bowles, third and final call, class 41 and 46. This is your first call, class 51, 53, and 54. Once again, first call, class 51, 53, and 54 to the Bank of Arena. I think you can probably flip a quarter between these two bulls and, and everybody's going to have a different opinion every time you flip the quarter. Bull that wins the class, a little stouter footed, stouter bone kind of a bull, but he's also flatter when you view him from the side. You get behind him and he actually has quite a bit of shape. I guess where I'd change him is he drives his hawk pretty hard and in a combination of that and being a little shallow heeled, so there's some concern there. Um, but he is a stouter featured, bigger body kind of guy at this point. Calf that stands here in second, I think just green. I think that one needs time. Um, he's big top, he's big hip, gives up some in terms of bone work, in terms of just power and lower forerib. Uh, I think that one in a little bit of time and feed, he's gonna might uh, swap that placing down the road.
Results of class number 37, and also your champion intermediate Charlie Bull goes to entry number 210, weighing 1,665 pounds, DCC Public Enemy 2215, exhibited by Doonan Cattle Company of Caldwell, Texas. Your reserve champion, weighing 1,599 pounds, goes to entry 209, Cars Mr. Ignite 222, owned by Barjay Livestock Incorporated of Liverpool, Texas, and Car Cattle Company of Webb City, Missouri. Now entering the ring is class number 40 of your spring yearling Charlet Bulls. This is your final call, class 51, 53, and 54 to the makeup arena. Final call, class 51, 53, and 54 to the makeup arena.
folks, these are this top end of this class. These are two really, really good Charlet bulls. Um, I've seen lots of white bulls in, in my career and time, and, and both in the show ring and, and sorting them. Um, probably sorted as many bulls as anybody in terms of just real world bull sorting. And these two, um, not only would I be proud to own them, um, but I'm proud to describe them to you. And I'm just going to tell you the differences that I see. The bull that I use, I think, has more expression of muscle, and he's probably just a leaner bull. And with that leanness, he still blends, and the, right at the top of his shoulder, he blends in. The point of his shoulder, he blends in. And when you really get behind him, there's just, a, I think, more pin width and more lower stifle width to that bull. He's not as soft right behind it. You know, through the midsection is the bull in second. Um, I think the bull in second probably has just a touch more cover to him. Um, it, he's just a little softer look to him. But when I analyze him with that softer look, he's a little more open at the top of his shoulder, and he's a little rounder. So I, I think there's good in both these bulls. I love the softness of the second bull. I love the expression of muscle of the bull that wins the class. Um, that's just a, a hard decision, and, and I'm going to go with my gut where I'm at. But I can tell you this, that's two really good bulls. Congratulations to them. Young man that stands here in third has a bull that's similar in terms of expression of muscle. We give up some in just sheer pounds of performance. This guy, though, when you get out and, and, and he moves, real sound, good moving, good doing kind of a guy. Um, bull that we exited out the ring, real soft made, sound, more of a Cavanese type bull um, in terms of not quite as much power and shape to him. Um, that young lady held on, did the best she could. He just wasn't having it this evening. Results of class number 40 of your Charlotte Bull Show in first place, weighing 2,060 pounds. Entry number 215, SKS Super Puncher 423K, owned by Carson Carter of Iola, Texas, Aaron Strittmatter of Pilot Point, Texas, Walker Farm of Dayton, Texas, Fox Hollow Farms of Catoosa, Oklahoma, and Theron K. Scenes of Gainesville, Texas. In second place, entry number 214 with a weight of 1,948 pounds, SCC One Reason 1114, owned by Whirl Enterprises of Mason, Texas, Oklahoma Bovine Genetics of Miami, Oklahoma, Sam Silk Cattle Company of Cloverdale, Indiana. In third place, entry number 218 with a weight of 1,708 pounds, HL Diablo's Outsider LD, exhibited by Cole E. Harris of Hepler, Kansas. In fourth place, with a weight of 2,122 pounds, entry number 219, Rock and W Nuclear Explosion 2001, exhibited by Lily G. Williams of Keithville, Louisiana.
another challenging pair, and, and I think you just have to decide what your personal preference is. And, and honestly, I just made just kind of thought to myself, which one would you buy? And, and I guess the the young lady in in the gray or rust colored vest. I like the athleticism. I like the structural build of that bull. I'm going to be the first one to tell you that he's lean. He's the one that probably needs, you know, relative to the bull that stands right behind him, needs more belly and softness and body. But you know, they may be managing that guy, or maybe he bred cows. There's a reason there, perhaps, or maybe he's just a hard doing sucker. I'm going to give him the advantage and say that I think that he's really an athlete, um, and, and he's one that, that has the right skeletal width and dimension that tells me he can look like this other bull in terms of softness. So I like the athleticism. I like the reach of our class winner. Now, with that said, the bull that stands there in second, he's a bigger middle, bigger body bull. He's one that's rounder in his hip, and he's not as consistent on how he handles his pastern. Every, he, he, about every fourth or fifth step, he, he ratchets his pastern up, and, and I'd like to just see him soften and relax some. So there's some give and take. You got one that I think is a real athlete. One's a little softer middle, bigger body. I like the athleticism of the one that wins the class and the power that he has. Your class 41 results of your Charlotte Bulls in first place with a weight of 1769 goes to entry 220. CAG Clear Vision 2634K, exhibited by Cagney Effling of Highmore, South Dakota. In second place with a weight of 1995 goes to entry number 222, NDSC Bugalug TW260K, exhibited by Nick D. Christian Farrell of Vienna, Ohio. Now entering the ring is a selection of your junior champion, Charlie Bull. Folks, I look pretty hard at that pair of bulls in that first class, and we're going to keep the camera. I think the, the mass, the dimension, the soundness, the correctness, those two bulls fit me really well, um, and, and they're going to be our champion in reserve, taking nothing away from our class winner that wins uh, that second class. I think that guy's better days are to come. He's pretty green today. I think he'll get there in time. So congratulations to those exhibitors. And your champion, Junior Charlet Bull, goes to entry number 215, SKS Super Puncher 423, owned by Carson Carter of Iola, Texas, Aaron Strittbatter of Pilot Point, Texas, Walker Farm of Dayton, Texas, Fox Hollow Farms of Catoosa, Oklahoma, and Theron Skeens of Gainesville, Texas. Your reserve champion goes to entry number 214, SCC One Reason 1114, owned by Whirl Enterprises of Mason, Texas, Oklahoma Bovine Genetics of Miami, Oklahoma, and Samsell Cattle Company of Cloverdale, Indiana. Now entering the ring is class number 46 of your two-year-old Charlet Bulls. Extra wide base, extra stout individual in our two-year-old class. Bullet, uh, big, huge groove down his top and, and really explosive when you look at him here in terms of pin width and base width down to the ground. Um, might want to give him just a little more reach off his hind legs. Um, there's been something that's been taught to me um, a lot on, on selecting bulls and, and um, those bulls that are, are really kind of slick nutted or, or have a lot, you know, have a testosterone advantage. Something here you might want to note on that guy, but that is a big stout, big bodied, uh, good doing kind of a guy. Results of class 46 of your two-year-old Charlie Bulls and also your senior champion bull goes to entry number 226 with a weight of 2337. BJCF Caldwell J701 exhibited by Barn J Livestock Incorporated of Liverpool, Texas.
At this time, we'd like to honor a member of the AICA staff with 30 years of service this year, Mr. Floyd Wampler. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for this dedicated AICA staff member. Thank you again, Floyd, for all of your hard work, for your 30 years of dedication to the Charlet industry. Floyd, if you would please step into the ring. I'd hate to ask Floyd how many miles he's driven for the Charlet breed. Folks, when he comes out, let's put our hands together and show this guy in a big way how much we appreciate him because Floyd's one of the great ones in the world's road warriors, and uh, he's made a lot of sacrifices and a lot of days on the road for, Flo for the Charlet breed. And now we will continue with the awarding of this year's 55th National Herdsman Award. To hand over the award with the 54th National 2022 Herdsman, Will Blankers, please step to the ring to present the award. This year, the 55th National Herdsman Award in honor of the late Ted Kelly goes to Chris Poister. Congratulations, Chris. Chris is the Herdsman of Wright Charlais of Richmond, Missouri. And we'd like to invite Ethel Kelly to come to the ring as well to present the award in honor of her late husband, Ted Kelly. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for Chris Poister, this year's 55th National Herdsman Award winner for 2023 of the Charlet Breed. And now entering the, the ring, ladies and gentlemen, will be the selection of your grand champion, Charlotte Bull, here in your open show. We'd like to take a second to thank our grand champion bull sponsor, LG Herndon Jr. Farms, as well as JWC Marketing LLC for sponsoring the Reserve Grand Champion Bull Award. This time, we'd also like to recognize your division champion sponsors, Bob Morton, Sandusky Farms, Outfront Cattle Service, Jeffrey Charlays, Bart Kayser, Johnson Oaks Genetics, West Charlays, Reeves Charlays, Efforts Key Ranch, Rolling Hill Charlays, Red River Valley, Daub Charlays, and Millstone Cattle Company. A big thanks to our Reserve Division champion sponsors, Montgomery Charlays, Ben and Charles Hayden, SNK Charlays, Penrod Lumber, Kentucky United Producers Incorporated, Robert Green Jr., the Kentucky Department of Agriculture, Cowboy Fire and Tim Prather and Kentucky Charlay's Association. Big thanks to our sponsors once again.
And ladies and gentlemen, if you would please put your hands together one more time for our judge this evening, Ms. Sheremy Vietar of Texas. Thank you for being a big part of the history here at the 50th North American, Sheremy. It's great to have you back. couple of just real, quick, real fast comments. Uh, some unsung heroes here, uh, folks in the photography staff, I appreciate you guys. Um, Lindy's is here um, for the duration of show and, and you know sometimes those photographer folks, the announcers crew, y'all probably don't get thanked enough so we appreciate you guys. It takes a lot of time to make this happen. Thanks to AICA um, folks for just what you guys do to help us uh, as breeders, I would appreciate that. And the final comment that I'll make is, and this is um, the very reason why I get to judge shows, I think, is to talk about if you show cattle, you're part of the beef industry. And folks, we have some challenges ahead of us in the beef industry um, and agriculture in general. You have the opportunity uh, in your community to, to make a point to talk about uh, that we are the stewards of the land. We raise a safe, nutritious product in terms in the beef industry. And I think that's important that uh, we each take the opportunity to have those hard conversations. If it's somebody that you're flying on an airplane with, or you're talking to your doctor, your lawyer, your kids, school teachers, um, we're gonna have to have those discussions as beef producers, or else we're not gonna be here in five or 10 years down the road um, to have these events like this in agriculture. So that's my one challenge and one ask of each and every one of you. Please be willing to have those conversations. Um, with that said, thank you for the opportunity. Um, been some challenges here, there, and yonder to get things sorted out in my mind, but I'm comfortable where I'm gonna go with the champion and reserve bull. You guys be safe going home. Thanks again for the opportunity. And your grand champion, Charlie Bull, here at the 2023 North American goes to entry number 215, SKS Super Puncher for 23 King, owned by Carson Carter of Iola, Texas, Aaron Strittmatter of Pilot Point, Texas, Walker Farm of Dayton, Texas, Hollow Fox Hollow Farms of Catoosa, Oklahoma, and Theron D. Skeens of Gainesville, Texas. Congratulations. And your reserve grand champion, Charlay Bull, goes to entry number 214, SCC, one of reason, 1114, exhibited by Whirl Enterprises of Mason, Texas, Oklahoma Bovine Genetics of Miami, Oklahoma, Samsung Cattle Company of Cloverdale, Indiana. Once again, thank you so much, Charlay Breeders, for your attendance here at the 50th anniversary of the North American here in Louisville, Kentucky. Please don't forget, bowl class winners and, or excuse me, bowl division winners and reserve. We will need your photos here at the backdrop. We will be doing class number 51, the produce of dam as well. Produce of dam, you may enter the ring. Once again, produce of dam contestants, you may enter the ring.
and we started out in a port And results from Class 51 from your Produce of Dam contest. Your winner goes to Skeens Cattle Company of Gainesville, Texas in first place. Second place goes to Kixley Gillum of Arkansas. Third place, Doonan Cattle Company of Caldwell, Texas. And fourth place goes to Long Haul Cattle of Hillsboro, Ohio. Congratulations, Charlotte exhibitors. Results of Class 53 for your Ginnup Sire for your Charlay breed. Your winner goes to Skeens Cattle Company of Gainesville, Texas. Congratulations. Class 54 winner goes to Long Haul Cattle of Hillsboro, Ohio. And finally, ladies and gentlemen, your challenge trophy, your premier exhibitor, goes to Kathy Lehman of Shelby, Ohio. Congratulations once again.
attention in the barns if there is a representative for Kathy Lehman that would like to come pick up the challenge award. Please feel free to come back here to Freedom Hall and pick that up. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, Charlotte Breeders, thank you all so much for joining us here at the 50th Annual North American International Livestock Exposition. Thank you for your patience this evening. We will see you back here in Freedom Hall tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock. And once again, ladies and gentlemen, thank you all so much. Enjoy the rest of your evening. God bless you all. Thank you.